often we see at the racetrack that cars are entering a turn, but the road actually takes a, a steep bank or is, is angled upward. This bank upward actually allows them to make the turn at a faster, at a faster speed. In other words, it provides a centripetal force to the car. We're going to work through a sample problem where we consider a car on a banked curve. So in this diagram, we might imagine that this is a road and the car is heading straight toward us. In other words, we've made a cross-sectional slice through the, through the track. And as it rounds the racetrack, the, the road may have a bank angle of about an angle theta. And we can ask, what is the maximum speed at which the car can take the turn? To make this interesting, we'll even consider the ca case where the racetrack has no friction between the car and the track. We again must develop a coordinate system to, to solve this problem. We'll do something a little unusual for our, from our past examples where we had inclined planes. We're going to take an, a coordinate system where horizontal is in the x direction and vertical is in the y direction. We're going to do that because the centripetal acceleration needs to point back toward the center of the track, which is along the x direction. To solve this, then, we're going to need to set, use Newton's laws and say that mass times acceleration in the y direction is equal to the sum of all the forces in the y direction, and mass times acceleration in the x direction, or the centripetal force in this case, because that's where it points back toward, is equal to the sum of the forces in the x direction. There are only two forces in this problem. There is the normal force pointing away from the track, and there is gravity pointing straight down. There is nothing pointing back toward the center of the track per se in the x direction. There are components of these vectors pointing in the x direction, but these are the only two forces, the normal force and the gravitational force. In the y direction, there are two forces. There's a component of the normal force, and it's n times cosine theta, which points in the y direction and that's in the positive y direction, and mg, which points in the negative y direction. Since the car doesn't leave the track, it, the acceleration in the y direction is zero, and we can write zero is n cosine theta minus mg. We can solve for this uh, exp expression for the normal force, because we don't actually need it. We don't care about the normal force per se, except we'll use it in later parts of the problem. And we find that n equals mg over cosine theta. This should make sense to us, because if theta was zero, in other words, the track was flat, then the normal force should be just mg, which is a car sitting on a flat ground. In the x direction, we know that the value for the magnitude of, centri of centripetal acceleration is v squared over r, and therefore the centripetal force has to be equal to mv squared over r. So where do we get that? mv squared over r from? Well, there's only one force that points in the m x direction, and that's a component of the normal force, n times sine theta. So we write that mv squared over r is n sine theta, and now we insert the value for the normal force that we found from the, the vertical, the y direction, and that is mg over cosine theta. The masses will cancel in this expression, and we find that v squared is rg times tangent of theta. So let's just check ourselves and make sure that this makes sense. If this velocity represents the speed at which we can take the turn and still have the banked curve supply the centripetal force necessary to make the turn, this speed can get bigger if the radius of the turn is larger. So that, that should make sense. That means that if we had a larger racetrack, we could go faster around it. Or it also tells us that if the angle theta is larger and t therefore tangent of theta is larger, we could make the turn faster. And you can see in this photograph, actually this banked turn seems to have an angle more like 45 or even more degrees. So let's just try putting in some numbers. If we had a football field size or soccer field size uh, radius of curvature, the radius might be 100 meters or so. And let's take theta is 45, where the tangent then becomes one. The square root of 100 meters times g, uh, which is about 10 meters per second squared, then gives us that v is about 32 meters per second. Remember, the tangent will equal 1 for 45 degrees. 32 meters per second is approximately equal to 72 miles per hour. 
that doesn't sound like a whole lot when we think about some race car uh, tracks and how fast people go around them. But remember that we had here a, a case of a frictionless racetrack. We haven't even put in friction yet. Friction helps provide even more of a restoring force back toward the center of the, of the circular path and enables us to go even faster around the racetrack. But we did a very simple problem here to begin with.